Good morning. Uh, I'm Nicola Gray. I'm Associate Director of CISC um, with responsibility for research and evaluation. And this is my colleague, Dr. Alison Munro, who's a lead researcher and who will be leading the evaluation of this project. You normally end a presentation with a thank you, but I'm actually going to start the presentation with a thank you, um, because I may not actually get another opportunity to speak to all of you all at once. So I wanted to say thank you hugely for everything that you've done to help with this project, everything that you hopefully will do to help with this project, and thank you very much for taking the time out of what I know is very, very busy schedules um, to be here today. Um, so, we're going to give you a whistle-stop tour, and it is very whistle-stop, um, about the EIP process, which is the Evidence into Practice pro uh, approach, which is what we are um, researching. So, Evidence into Practice approach. So, CISC. CISC is the Scottish Improvement Science Collaborating Centre. What is it? What do we do? Why are we doing this? So, CISC researches improvement. We want to understand how improvements happen, what makes them successful or not, how those improvements become routine, and how they can be scaled up so that everybody can improve. In this project, we're testing something called the Evidence into Practice Approach, which has been used elsewhere to successfully help translate, mobilise <coughs> evidence into practice change. So the stuff that we know that seems to work, that's in the papers and the books, <coughs> into actions on the, on the wards. The details of the EIP approach is in your packs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail. But in a nutshell, there's four phases. The first phase is gathering together and making sense of the evidence. The second phase is asking the experts, and that's you, what's feasible, what's likely, um, what the likely impact is of the improvements, and what's currently being done. And we did that via an online consultation, which I know that some of you responded to. Phase three is getting the experts together. Again, that's you. Um, to identify the barriers and the enablers to making changes. And we had three national workshops, which I know that a lot of you were at. <coughs> and then phase four is pulling all together and uh, feeding them back. And that's what this report here, which will be in your packs, which you'll get um, after break time, it's all in here. At CISC, you're going to hear the bang on about evidence. Um, so I just wanted to briefly touch on what we meant by evidence and what we've done in relation to this uh, project. So that hopefully you can have some confidence about the evidence that we're going to present to you. Mm -hmm. So evidence synthesis, that's the first phase. Um, what's that mean? It simply means finding all the relevant evidence which addresses a particular topic, assessing its quality so that you don't end up using evidence like the stuff in the cartoon, um, and then bringing it all together to make some kind of sense. That's all that we've done with our evidence synthesis. Uh, Alison and I are both academics, but we're, we're disassociating ourselves from, from that, that cartoon. <laughs> um, so in order to try and help us identify the highest quality evidence, we looked at evidence that come from systematic reviews. I don't know how many of you know about systematic reviews, um, but basically they collect together evidence from a number of different studies to provide a high level of evidence about the effectiveness of healthcare interventions or practices. So the systematic reviews assess the quality of the studies that go into the review, and we assess the quality of the reviews. Um, we produced evidence statements um, and we used a framework, something called GREED, all the details in the pack again, to help us to categorise the statements based on the quality into high, moderate or weak, and the strength of the recommendations, so from effective, so we should definitely be doing that, to ineffective, so we should definitely stop doing that, and everything in between. 
I'm going to keep referring to this because Jill and everyone else put a huge amount of effort into this. All the details of the different phases, the results of the online questionnaire, the uh, feedback from the national workshops, the barriers and enablers, the good practice, it's all in this booklet. Back to the EIP approach. Um, so we've done a huge amount of work, you've done a huge amount of work, um, but we need to evaluate it so that we can understand what changes happen, how they happen, what differences there are between units and why, um, what does it all mean, and how do we collectively share that so that others can learn from what's happened. We also don't want to lose all the efforts that you've already put in. Um, and everything that you're going to do going forward. And the key is for us that this, this goes way beyond just neonatal uh, units. What we can learn from this study in terms of how you get this <coughs> into practice and how that happens and how you get that to scale and make it sustainable has lessons for other clinical areas of practice. Um, so this is hugely important. It's a, it's a key work stream for the CISC. I'm now going to um, hand over to Alison, who is going to take you through what the evaluation is going to look like. Did I just, there we go. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a very, this is the only slide I'm going to use, and I'm just going to give you a very, and apologies to those who've seen it before, it's become my favourite slide of late. Um, I'm just going to give you a very sort of brief outline of the evaluation that is about to start pretty soon and explain to you what this chart is, is, is uh, illustrating in terms of the approach that we're taking to the evaluation. Obviously it's a very complicated evaluation and it's based on a, a, a theoretical approach to evaluation called a realist approach which I won't go into too much detail about but basically to say that we really want to focus down on the units as Nicola mentioned and look in great detail at the context in which we're trying to implement any of these changes that you decide to make yourselves. So, oops, as Nicola said, the evaluation um, very broadly is about how to understand getting evidence into practice at scale and the lessons from this will also be transferable hopefully to other areas of practice. Um, the evaluation that we are doing is largely qualitative and as you can see from here it is, I don't know if there's a pointer on this, but anyway, it, we have a case study strand involving potentially three neonatal units and a non-case study strand which will involve up to 12 units. Obviously all participation in the study is voluntary um, and we'll be in touch with the units and we have been doing some raising so far uh, as well to um, in, in order to sort of engage with you and get the evaluation underway. So in terms of the case study units, we will be interviewing staff, we will be interviewing parents, and we'll also be doing observations. So we'll be interviewing staff for the case study, we will be interviewing parents, and we'll also be doing observations of practice. And in the non-case study site, we will be interviewing staff only, and at one time point only throughout the study as well. Um, in the, in the case study, we'll, we'll be interviewing at times one, two, and three, so that is in the next few weeks, then again at three to six months' time, and then after that at 12 to 15 months. Um, and the purpose of that really is to gather people's views as they're going through the process of implementation to understand in detail what has been successful, what hasn't been successful, and the barriers to change as well as the facilitators of change. Um, lastly, at the end of the study, we'll also utilise secondary outcome data where we can and look retrospectively at any changes that have happened in clinical and non-clinical measures. So, that's the purpose of evaluation. Um, Nicola and I were in competition to do the quickest presentation possible today, so <laughs> hopefully I've won that one. <laughs> um, so, I'll be around for the rest of the day if anybody wants to talk about the evaluation and ask any questions about it. It's uh, probably worth mentioning just now that we do have NHS ethics approval for the evaluation and we also have R&D management approval from all but one board at the moment. So we're ready to go when you are with the evaluation. Okay. So I'll take, yeah, I'll be, be here throughout the day and so Nicola to take any questions on it and speak to you about it. Anyway.